It's only a baby Autograph A tin type Of long ago I know it's old-fashioned But please don't laugh I love that picture so If I just could hear that voice again Oh, gee There's an old curiosity shop My goodness, take a look at all of that beautiful glass, pottery, and such. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Welcome back to the dining room table in the 1925 bungalow. We've got a thrift haul and it's all for sale. But of course, as usual, before we begin, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by... Well, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by the new Martinsville Glass Company. And do you recognize that pattern? Well, it's called Moondrops. Now, I've just added this cup and saucer uh, to my collection. Purchased it two or three days ago. And that's all the thrift shop had was one cup and one saucer. Now, New Martinsville is known for really vivid colors, but uh, a little higher quality, I have to say, than Jeanette and Hazel Atlas and Anchor Hawking in Indiana. Uh, the glass is polished and colors are beautiful. This has a little moon drop right down there. I guess I should hold it up so you can have a, a better look at it. Ooh, don't spill it. Now this is in the amber color, which is probably not that easy to see with all of these other glass pieces behind it. But that's my little uh, snack for the morning. And it, we're gonna only have one ginger, ginger snap. It's before lunchtime, so we don't really wanna break it wide open. Mm, 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 mm. I know a lot of you make your coffee or your tea and you drink it with me while you're watching. Boy, I'll tell you what, let's talk about all of this beautiful glass. Now, everything that you see on the dining room table today uh, is either currently listed or being listed today. Uh, this video should be released by about 12 noon on Tuesday. And by 5 p.m. today, mm -hmm, it's all going to be for sale in the OCS. That's the website. That's the eBay store. And you can find a link to my store in the description box below this video. A few of the things are already listed. But again, as I said, if you don't see anything, I'm not listing any of this as a buy it now. It's all going to run as a seven-day auction. So everyone will have a chance to get their bids in there and it'll be listed by the end of the day. Well, at least this time I did uh, write myself out a little cheat sheet because there's so much swimming around in my brain, uh, I sometimes lose track. Let's begin here with these little tomato glasses. Don't know who made them. I've only got three and they're all hand painted, but somebody out there is bound to have the picture or some other glasses in this set uh, and they've gotten lost or broken, but you can see they're, they're hand painted. And these go back to the 30s and 40s, probably the 1940s. These are in excellent condition without any damage. Um, I didn't try to search for them. I suppose I could have, but uh, just gonna go ahead and throw those up and offer them for sale. 
Now here, uh, center stage, front and center, you're gonna, some of you are already laughing at me. Mm-hmm. The reason I bought the little dessert bowls, the little berry bowls here, these are four and a half inch berry bowls with a rimmed, uh, with a pe sort of a pebbled border. And uh, I don't see these as much. So it's the iris pattern. You'll, you'll hear collectors say iris and herringbone. And this is Jeanette, and they did the, irid the iridized pieces in the 50s. And it's, uh, it's odd because I like the Normandy pattern, which is iridescent, and which dates to the 30s. And I think if I remember that's federal glass, I remember that. But this of course is Jeanette. And so we'll uh, be selling the little dessert bowls. But it's the, the funny thing is, is that the ruffled bowl in about three or four different sizes. That's what I see in every thrift shop that I ever walk into. Now you saw me fiddling with this in the car the other day. And if you remember, this is the Cambridge Caprice pattern in the beautiful uh, moonlight blue. And look how it just, it's just gleaming right here on the table in the sunlight. I've got two sherbets and then I don't know that you saw this over here is the uh, elevated, or rather the stemmed uh, compote, which could be for serving all different types of things at the dinner table. And again, same pattern. Beautiful color by Cambridge, moonlight blue. Uh, still highly prized by folks who like a colorful table. And boy, you're really seeing that here with all of the, that's right, the jewel tones of the 20s and uh, mid 30s. We start to get into the late 30s and the women don't want this color anymore. They want to go back to uh, clear glass or what was usually marketed as crystal. What about this right here? Isn't that a showstopper? It's tacky and it's wonderful. It's wonderfully tacky. You have to agree. Well, I don't suppose you have to, but uh, can you just see this? And somebody somebody is flipping out over this right now. Tacky Florida souvenir that were purchased by someone on vacation. Cheap, uh, you know, low-fired, lightweight ceramic made in Japan, and what does it say? It says exclusive. I don't know what the D is. I didn't look that up. Some importer, okay. So made in Japan, we're clearly in the early 60s here, so this is as old as I am, or a little bit older. And we have the, well, let's get it focused back in. We have a cream, creamer, sugar, bowl with lid, salt and pepper shaker, and an underplate, and they all say Florida on them. And there's that after the war, sort of 1960s made in Japan sticker there. A couple of little flea bites here and there, but really not, not that bad. See, there's a little chip right there. And uh, there's a little flea bite right here on the edge of the creamer. Now, uh, there is a crack in the handle of this creamer and it's only right there. It did not, from what I can see, it did not break off and become re-glued. It's just a crack all the way through. Hey, put a little, put a little super glue on that just to, you know, shore it up and you're fine. This is probably more decorative, but you know, you could certainly use it. And this is gonna go into somebody's 1960s kitchen and they're gonna just love that set. I have no doubt. Let's go back to the Cambridge Glass Company now. And we've got a beautiful three-part uh, dish here, the wildflower pattern and it's gilded. A lot of these patterns would be introduced sometime in the 30s and continuously made into the 1950s. That wasn't that unusual. This could be for candy or relish for uh, the, the dining table. Um, 
and you could get this in many different colors. I've got the bottom here on my dresser in a in a sort of a peach opal color or a pinkish pink shell, well, like a salmon color. And it's I keep my I throw my change in there and you know whatever else is rolling around in your pockets at the end of the day. Uh, but this one is uh, lidded and there's no condition problems on that. It's a nice piece and it has uh, a nice little bit of value to it when you go and you look it up on the internet. Now this over here, we're going to go really fast. It's just a great big miscellaneous lot of depression glass. And I haven't listed it yet. Again, I'm listing it today. And I'm probably not even going to bother to list all of the patterns. A lot of them you'll recognize very easily. We have some um, Mount Pleasant here and uh, some ribbon and uh, rings and oh gosh, but look at the colors. This is a unique color right here, very unique. And then there's a salt shaker with an original lid. And then this is unique back here. This is missing its lid. This one actually sit and then you could put uh, you see how this fits down in and then a salt and a uh, pepper shaker could sit there but this is uh, this glass here again as I said we've got uh, just a mixture for folks who want to maybe start a depression glass collection uh, it looks nice just Random pieces put together like that on a kitchen shelf you can decorate with. Here are two sconces that I'm going to guess date to about the 1920s. And they do look just like mantle luster prisms that are all connected here. It's all molded glass. It's four, done in a mold. Um, we've got seam lines on here. But they look like prisms, as you can see. Yeah. I, I just, I love it. And these uh, could, it's nice heavy glass and they're good and it's good and clear. And the light really bounces off of those. I believe this uh, would require a two and a quarter fitter, but the information will be in the auction specifically. And I know someone, I can't remember your name, but you asked me about these and they're listed and you've been waiting for them. Okay, so there they are. Royal Beruth, you know that color from 10 feet away. You can't mistake it. Wonderful German company, isn't it? Yeah, it's German. That's their poppy line. And I'll put some photographs in here to show you some of the other pieces that you could get in this particular line. You can see. And then this is the biscuit jar here. Uh, and they're known for this wonderful, uh, very interesting color here, sort of a red and burnt orange, and it's just uh, a color that you see in the line. Uh, let's see, they had a wonderful line with lobsters. Very detailed, very well done. And then, of course, the Red Devil. That stuff is hard to find and valuable. Put a picture of that in here as well. Don't you love that? And, uh, but this is the poppy biscuit jar. Dates to, I forget what I told you it dates to, after the turn of the century. So, I don't know, 1905, 1907. Uh, the only damage is there was one flea bite chip right there. And someone has already colored that in, not very well, but they you could, do, you could do a much better job than that. That's the only damage on it. Otherwise, uh, it's in excellent condition and this little handle here has never been broken which is simply amazing now if we turn this piece upside down we get nothing except a number the Germans did put numbers on their things quite often some of the pieces are marked and some are not uh, doesn't need a mark we don't have to turn it upside down nobody else did this did this quality or, or, or this particular color you just won't mistake in it so that's a lovely piece. 
I think. Look at those two mixing bowls back there in the beehive shape. Who made them? Mm -hmm. Pyrex made those. And they went with a particular mixer, uh, KitchenAid, I think. Let's take a closer look. I can't believe I have two of them. We'll get in there. And we can see Pyrex with the, regist with the uh, registered trademark made in USA. It's this for the KitchenAid and it's the Model C. Can you see that? And it's threaded at the bottom so it fits down into that particular mixer and then locks in place. I've got two of these bad boys and they can sell for about $40 each. They can sell for a little bit more than that. Uh, I bought both of those just the other day. And they're going to be going up. Uh, uh, someone is going to be thrilled to get those to go with their mixer because they may have already they may have broken theirs. Now uh, the fun little uh, mid-century 1950s 60s. I've got one, two, three, four, five soup bowls. That's a cute little mid-century rooster. And this is made by Metlocks in California, and it's the Poppy Trail pattern. These are eight and a quarter inches, and they're in wonderful condition without crazing. Uh, no chips or cracks, and they are marked on the back. And this is a nice, uh, there's uh, some value to those and some collectability, so I was happy to, to find those. And, you know, I'm always trying to find more from the mid-century, so there we are. Now, do you recognize the picture in the back. Ooh, I was excited. It's a common pattern, but it's not terribly easy to find that picture. They used to be worth a lot more than they are now, but this is the patrician, patrician, sorry, or sometimes called spoke pattern, and we can see it here in amber, and I'll hold it up for you. Now, this has an applied handle. I'm sorry, a molded handle, but there's also an example with an applied handle. Uh, this pattern is was called Golden Glow rather than Amber. That was the name that the Federal Glass Company gave it. And it was made from 1933 to 1937. Again, you could find one with an applied handle. Uh, but that's the example with the molded handle on it. That particular picture one just sold in, I think, last November for $73. Uh, I've got some dust on it from drying it off or fuzz from the towel. This has no chips or cracks, and I'll be excited to sell that. Another great big picture frame. This time, once again, this is the real thing. You're going to have to get a piece of glass cut, but look how large that is. You're going to be able to put an 8x10 in there easily. Get your glass, get a mat, all of that. These frames are usually a lot smaller. So this is a heavy, solid brass antique frame. This was not made in India, and this was not made in China, and it was not made in Brazil, and that's an old one. Now you say, well, how do you know? <laughs> Well, let's turn it upside down. Uh, we're going to take a look at the back. Uh, take a look at the clips that hold the glass in. They don't make the new ones like that. We've got all four of them on the back. Uh, I don't find a, a foundry mark on this. Again, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. The way the easel is connected to the back turn it this way again. You can see there's a clip on the top, so it can also be hung, if you'd like, on, on the wall. And you can unscrew, you can take the easel piece off, if you'd like, and then use it on the wall. So this is a nice one, great big, heavy brass standing picture frame. And uh, boy, that's going to be nice on the back of somebody's upright piana. Well, that's it for what's on this part of the table. We're going to have a mystery quiz in just a moment with the glass back there, but let me first tell you that 
I want to show you a lamp that's going to be for sale in the next live sale. Now, my next live sale is the last Monday night in January. So a week from yesterday, because today's Tuesday. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. You're going to see more of it when I do the live sale preview, but this is just a quick tease here to get you to see it. And what's nice about this is we click once and everything comes on and then we click it again and the bottom goes out and the top is lit up. And of course, probably you already know we click it again, we have light on the bottom, and then we can turn the whole thing off. It's in excellent condition with no damage at all. Probably dates to the 1950s and 60s. These were popular then, and it's totally complete, ready to go. I will take it apart and ship it in two boxes, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. You're gonna see that again before next Monday night. All right, I'm gonna give everybody an assignment because I know you love to look things up. Can you find it? Now take a good look at it. Go through your carnival glass books. If you're not doing anything tonight, just sitting around, turn off the news and get your books out. Now look, it's got a ribbed interior. No markings on it. Nice, big, heavy carnival glass pitcher and obviously we've got roses on there and the thorns there's the handle okay all right who made it and what's the pattern name can you do that can you figure that one out i know you guys enjoy doing that i do too now let's go over here and we're going to talk about two patterns depression glass patterns that are confused by many folk, and I often see these listed incorrectly when I'm fishing around uh, on my eBay sites. And this is why accuracy is another important thing. I want you to take a look. We've got a pattern on the right, and we've got a pattern on the left. They are not made by the same company, and they have two different names. Can you tell me down in the description box below, in the comment box, who made this pattern? Who made it? And what's the name of it? All right. And who made this pattern? And what is the name of it? And we certainly can see why some folks would get easily confused. You put those together and do a Google image search and who knows what you're going to get. But two different companies Two different patterns, what are they? All right, now have fun with that. Put that in the comments, comment section down below, and I've got to finish that cup of coffee over there and get the rest of this beautiful glass listed so that you can go shopping in the old curiosity shop. That's it for now. Thanks for watching everyone. Have yourselves a lovely day. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm.